Now on to the second demonstration and once again we're going to use our high gain SATCOM frequency down converter and we're going to characterize the input IP3 uh, over swept frequency and swept power. Let's see how it's done. For our second demo, as you saw in the introduction, we're going to switch to the SATCOM converter. That's the very high gain SATCOM converter. And we're not going to use the spectrum analyzer to make IMD measurements on it. We're going to use a swept IMD converter application. And this greatly simplifies the setup. So we'll go to the setup for the swept IMD on converters. And we call it IMDX. X is for converters. To set this up, we go to the mixer setup to describe the mixer characteristics. Remember, it has its own embedded local oscillator, so we don't need to control the local oscillator. And we don't need to set the power on the local oscillator. But we do need to set the frequencies. And here are the frequencies I've set up. The 11.3 gigahertz is our local oscillator. And we're going to go from a center frequency of 12.8 gigahertz with a 2 gigahertz span and down convert to see our IF frequency going from 500 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Finally, uh, next we have to set up the tone powers. And if you remember, this is a high gain converter. So we'll, we'll want to set the power quite low. And uh, we'll use 40 dB of source attenuation uh, to allow the power to get down to minus 65 dBm, which is a typical power for IMD for this SATCOM converter. Notice I've turned the power uh, off so if you uncheck power on on all channels, it'll turn off all the powers of all the sources on all of the uh, applications to make sure you don't accidentally overdrive uh, your device under test. We'll turn it on just before we make our measurement. And finally, we look at the uh, IMD uh, tone frequency. So this is where we set the delta tone, and I'm going to set it to 10 megahertz delta. And notice I've got uh, the IF bandwidth for the receiver. We can set it differently for the main tone, which is uh, a high-level signal compared to the IMD tone. Let's leave it at 1 kilohertz for now, and we'll see what the uh, signal um, looks like when we measure it. And then finally, we can choose lots of different sweep types. For today, I'm going to do a swept center frequency. And the other choices are sweeping the tone delta frequency, doing a power sweep, or sweeping the LO power. But of course, the LO is uh, an embedded LO, so I can't control its power. Back to the swept frequency. Before we make a sweep, I want to put up a couple of more traces that are available in the IMD measurement. Um, this is set up to allow you to add it, uh, up to five traces at a time, and you can make them all the same or different. So for example, these are the five traces we have. If I want an IM3, that's the... the uh, IM product relative to the carrier. A lot of times I look, like to look at the tone power, which would be the IM product power of the third order product as a power rather than as a DBC number. And uh, sometimes for down converters, we want to look at something like the input referred uh, intercept point, and that'll also be a third order. Here I'm choosing the average. That's just a single trace. It, it averages the higher and low tones, but we can choose just the low, just the high, the maximum, which is the worst case IIP, actually that would be the best case IIP, or the minimum, which would be the worst case. Uh, and finally, I'm going to add one more trace. And that last trace is going to be the tone gain. And this is the gain, and I can choose either the high tone, the low tone, the average again. And the reason I want to look at the tone gain is because I know what the gain of this converter is. It should be around 55, 56 dB. And so that's one way for me to verify I've got a good measurement. After all the measurements are added, I can turn on the power, take a sweep, and what do I see? Well, the tone gain is a little bit low, and we should already know what the cause of that is. Remember, I have an embedded LO, and the tone bandwidth for the main tone is set to 1 kilohertz. If I widen that out to something like 10 kilohertz, for example, and retake the sweep, I'll see the tone gain goes up much higher, around that 55 dB number. Now, even in the swept IMD measurement class, we can use the source control embedded LO, and this embedded LO allows us to find the local oscillator directly. And now that it takes a sweep, we can see the embedded LO delta frequency is about minus 
uh, 1800 hertz, and that explains why the 1 kilohertz offset didn't work. Now we can go back and change the IF bandwidth if we want from the main tone back down to 1 kilohertz, and we should retain that 55 dB number. And yes, we do. Let's scale. Uh, and for IMD, a lot of times I add the scale coupling and couple all the channels together so that uh, I can use a single scale to see them all. So at 15 dB per division, I can see the tone gain is 55 dB like I expect. The tone output power, that's the uh, blue tone, that's um, around minus 9.4. I happen to have two of those traces. And what I can do is change those to a high and a low trace. So I can say I want to change that to be the tone power out on the low of the high side, actually. I'll make that one. And I can change this one to be the tone power of the low side. And when I take a sweep again, I can see if there's any difference in the gain of the two tones. And with this sweep, we see the gain of the two tones are almost identical. Next, I highlight the purple trace, which is the power in the, the power of the third order uh, IMD product. And we can see it's down around minus 52. And then finally, the last trace I have up here is the input uh, IP3 or the input intercept point, and it's minus 43 dBm for this frequency converter. I do want to point out I'm making 201 points of IP3 measurement across the channel or across the frequency span, and I'm not having to control the sources or the spectrum analyzer or the local oscillator. Everything is controlled for me. So this is a, a big improvement in your ability to be productive. Let's take another slice of this frequency converter, and we'll look at the center frequency and see how the IMD products change with the, um, with the power driving into the source. So it's as simple as changing to the power sweep. We need to go to the mixer frequencies and make sure that the uh, mixer frequencies are correct. Uh, when we go from uh, center span to a fixed frequency, those are two different entries, so we could actually do them at two different sets of values. And then we have to set the tone power, and I've set it here from minus 70 to minus 55 dBm. Notice I've also chosen to set the input power with receiver leveling. And what that does is ensures that the two tones going into the device are exactly the same by being measured on the reference receiver. And as we take a sweep, we can see that the main power is going up. It looks like it's compressing a little bit. A little bit. We can see the third order tone here going up. And interestingly enough, as we move the marker along, we can see the input IP3 changes as the drive power changes. I want to create a couple of new traces. I want to look at the two input powers to make sure that they are correct and what I expect them to be. So I can set those up by choosing the tone power at the device input. And I'm going to create these in a new window because the scale is so different. Remember, these are down around minus 65 or minus 75 dBm. And now that it's created those two traces, we can trigger a sweep and take a look and see what the uh, input tone power is. Well, auto scale, and we see the two markers show that the input power I've asked for different powers along this x axis. And so if I say minus 61 dBm, you can see it's within a couple of hundredths of a dB of the actual power. I'll note that if you were using two sources in the spectrum analyzer at the end of a cable, you'd have a really difficult time getting such good tone power uh, at the input exactly correct. And of course, I haven't got a correction on yet, but if I had done a CalAll correction and had the uh, power calibration on, those would all be match corrected power. Uh, mismatch corrected calibrations and the power would be corrected to the power at the device under test reference input. And just for fun, I'm going to add a couple of new traces. I've added the fifth order high tone. I'll add the fifth order low tone. And maybe I'll add a seventh order tone power. And I'll add the other seventh order tone power. So now I'm going to look at the high and low tone powers of the seventh order. I've got the two fifth orders. We'll say, okay, we'll take a sweep. 
And at the end of the sweep, we can see that the interesting phenomena occurs. If I click on the marker, move the marker across the trace, I can see that in this region, the fifth order power has a minimum and the seventh order power has a maximum. Of course, in this region, we're limited by the noise floor, but we could go back and adjust the uh, uh, IMD tone, IF bandwidth to make that uh, floor lower. And one of the interesting things we can do is we can investigate this region where we see the IMD change and the IMD5 drop below the IMD7 by using one of the marker features. We have a special mode. It's called the IM Spectrum mode. And here it's created an IMD Spectrum plot with the same frequencies. And we do indeed see here's the third order. The fifth order is actually lower than the seventh order tone. And if we want to, we can go into the IMD Spectrum plot and do things like change the tone power and see what happens if we go to minus 55 dBm. And just like the power sweep indicated, we see the fifth order shoot up and the seventh order go down. So here back in the power sweep, we can see at those points, again, exactly what the spectrum plot showed. So this concludes our demonstration of doing swept IMD measurements where we can see things like the swept input intercept point, the swept main power, the swept input power, and the uh, IMD components.